Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our um, uh, Global Internships webinar this afternoon. Uh, we're going to give you a lot of good information. Um, I am Donna Schrader, and I am an assistant director at the University Career Center. My co uh, my colleague, Tony Krebs, is also attending. She's going to help uh, uh, talk to you, uh, answer chat questions in the chat. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'm doing this uh, at the invitation of Dr. Colopy because we wanted to talk to students about uh, the global internships that they can search for and how to apply for those. Uh, this is going to be pretty basic information, but it is uh, information that we're uh, very excited and pleased to be able to share with you today. Okay, so we're going to get started. And let's see if this is going to work for me. Okay, so understand the why of internships. An internship can do many things for you. It can get you good experience. It can give you networking opportunities. Um, and it can demonstrate to prospective employers you know, that you're willing to take a risk, that you uh, are willing to um, uh, learn new skills and deepen your knowledge. And so having this on your resume and being able to talk about it in an interview is an excellent uh, uh, way to demonstrate to prospective employers your willingness. And this is pretty important uh, information. So resumes and cover letters, we're going to talk about those today, just a little bit about uh, resumes and um, um, how to write them, how to make sure they're getting to the right person. And then um, you need to know that employers receive hundreds of resumes. So yours has to stand out with good information, concrete, factual information that they're going to look at. Now, a lot of cover letters and resumes go through an applicant tracking system first. And the applicant tracking system is a software that um, it parses the resumes and the cover letters based on whatever criteria the company has input. So uh, a hiring manager may say, I only want people who know this skill or this technology. Uh, and so it will look for that. And if you don't have it on your resume, you're not getting in. OK, um, so the other thing you have to, you know, once you get past the applicant tracking system is a person may look at a resume for six seconds or maybe 20 seconds, but they're making a decision about whether they want to read it further in those first six seconds. So you've got to get good information up at the top of the resume so that they can uh, make that decision to continue reading your document. Okay. And, um, you know, they want to be able to find key information. So you want to use white space adequately. You want to write in a professional, consistent format. And um, I'm going to recommend that you use reverse chronological format. So in each section of your resume, you're going to tell the most recent information first. Okay, so uh, with your education, you're going to start with Texas Tech because that's where you are now. And then if you have gotten a, a degree from another university or a community college, that needs to go underneath. So if you've gotten another degree from a different university or college, then it needs to go on there. If you attended, you know, in summers and you've only, you know, had a few hours uh, from that uh, college or university, it doesn't have to go on the resume. But if you got as many as, say, 60 hours, then you probably want to add that in and keep that uh, as part of it. Okay. okay. So the resume you write needs to be targeted to internships. Um, and especially if you're searching for global internships, you know, they're going to require a 
proficiency in maybe specific languages or uh, uh, soft skills that you need. So uh, you're going to be looking at the job description and utilize that to tell if, oh, this is a, a, an internship I'd like to have, but also to identify the skills and abilities that you need to include in that resume and cover letter in order to uh, apply for that. And, um, and then if you read lots of job descriptions, uh, you're going to have that. Um, now, later on, I'm going to leave the PowerPoint and go into our Career Center uh, website. And when I do that, uh, we're, I'm going to show you a lot of different resources that will help you. Okay. Oops, I went too far. Okay, so uh, being, you know, that you want a a global internship, you understand that the language is going to be very important, but don't oversell your language abilities. Uh, if you say that you are fluent in a language, you need to be fluent in that language because they may decide to conduct the interview in that language. Uh, but you can always qualify your level of ability, especially if you have multiple language. Um, you may be fluent in English and French and have basic knowledge of German. But that doesn't mean that you're disqualified from a study abroad or a global internship in Germany. It just means you're being honest about how much you can um, you know, speak that language. Um, and then you're gonna utilize um, the marketable skills. So um, my colleague Carol calls marketable skills suitcase skills because you pack them up and you take them with you to the next job. And so as you're learning skills, as you're developing your abilities and knowledge, all of that is transferable to the next job. And even if you're uh, moving from, let's say you were public relations and now you wanna go into finance, those skills are still suitcase skills. They still transfer with you. And a lot of them are still gonna be absolutely useful in the next job. Um, one of the best ways to identify marketable skills is to read lots of job descriptions. So um, one of our resources is going to help you find job descriptions. But the nice thing about it is you don't have to apply for all of these jobs. You just need to find job descriptions uh, in the area that you would like a job and in the country or with the language that you're most interested in. And so uh, you get to read all of these different job descriptions and very quickly you're going to start identifying, oh, every one of them has said that word. So I need to make sure I get that word, that skill into my resume and cover letter. Um, and a willingness to learn new things is a skill just like any other. Uh, but once you've identified those keywords, you're going to you're going to understand how to implement them in your bullet points and in your cover letter. Now, basic layout and format. Um, first of all, um, you are probably going to be uploading your resume to these international companies. Uh, through an applicant tracking system. And an applicant tracking system is an artificial intelligence that parses the resumes and figures out which ones meet the requirements that the hiring manager has um, you know, set, set out for that position, okay? So don't use a template. Templates are beautiful. Yeah, they demonstrate your creativity, but they have background formatting that may not let the applicant tracking system read all of your information. So be cover, careful of co uh, color, uh, tables, text boxes, headers and footers. You have to create this resume for the um, least intelligent artificial intelligence out there, okay, in the applicant tracking system uh, world. Um, so make it very basic, don't use columns uh, or text boxes, any of those things I've already mentioned. Um, you can use color 
if you're using it in a way that if the color goes away, your information is still there. So if you like the idea of using a little bit of color, don't use it in a font, use it as a line to uh, you know, delineate between the different sections. Uh, borders and shading, those are really good. Okay, uh, choose an easy to read font. Uh, choose a font that is out there. Uh, you do not want to choose a font that if I don't have that font available on my computer, that it changes it to something entirely different. And I'm sitting there going, why in the world would they use this font? It's so hard to read. So use a basic font. Okay. You can use all caps, you can use small caps, lines and bold to help pull the eye down the page. Uh, and as we've said already, utilize reverse chronological format in each section. Okay, so you're not doing this, uh, the most recent thing first and then the next and the next. You're doing that per section. So your education section, reverse chronological. Your experience section, reverse chronological. Okay. Now, I'm not going to tell you not to ever have a creative resume. Okay, you may need to have that resume. Um, so utilize if you want to use that creativity, then take that as uh, um, a resume, you know, as a leave behind when you're in an interview. Uh, utilize it when you're emailing someone and networking with them. Uh, take it to the job fair. All right. But just recognize that you need a resume that will get you through the applicant tracking system and that creative one that'll capture the eye. All right. So some more about the applicant tracking system. Um, the the idea is that you want them to read the information that you want them to have. And you may know what the hiring manager wants to know. You may have all of those skills and all of those abilities. But if the applicant tracking system can't read your table or can't read columns on your resume, then it's going to reject you. And no one is ever going to see your resume. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have an, the University Career Center has a webinar about applicant tracking systems if you want to attend that and learn some more. So there's, it's just a difficult thing. Now, possible resume sections. These are options. You don't have to have everything. And if you name your section something different than what I suggest, that's up to you. Um, so uh, you're going to want to start with your uh, name and contact information. You're going to want your uh, education at the top because being a student makes you eligible for the internship. Okay. Uh, you might also have a um, uh, skills section. If the skills are really, really important to that job, you may put your skills section above your experience section, or it may be below that. It'll just depend on what you think is most important. Um, you can also have, uh, you know, experiences. Um, it's best if your experiences are relevant to the job you're seeking or the area that you're seeking. Um, but, you know, Everyone knows that college students take the kinds of jobs that they can get in order to, um, you know, work their way through college. So it's not going to be as big a deal if you don't have a lot of directly relevant experience, but you do want to show that you've got uh, those skills, those abilities, that uh, ability to communicate effectively or uh, resolve problems, those kinds of things. Um, if your experience is not as relevant, then use academic projects to demonstrate the skills and knowledge that you uh, need to showcase for that area. Um, you're going to use those academic projects just like you uh, present a, a job on the resume. You're going to give it a name and you're going to give two or three bullet points 
that start with those strong action verbs and show what you the results and accomplishments that you've had in those areas. Uh, leadership experience is also a wonderful way because you can show management abilities, you can show that you're willing to take on responsibility, uh, problem solving, you know, all of those kinds of things. Okay, and volunteer experience can be uh, put in relevant experience if it's relevant. Uh, you don't have to sit there and say, oh, I can only have paid experience on my resume. No, it doesn't matter to that employer whether it's paid or unpaid. All right. Um, <laughs> This is, this is your headers. So you do not want to use headers or footers uh, because your uh, applicant tracking system may not be able to read those. So your name and contact information needs to go in the body of the resume. I know that takes up space, but you don't want to have the best content in the world, but the applicant tracking system, you know, blanked out your uh, name and contact information because it was in the header. Um, you need to provide a phone number and an email, and I'm going to recommend your TTU email because that, again, establishes you as a student. Um, but you can put both a TTU and a personal email, especially if you're about to graduate and you want them to be able to get to you after you graduate. Um, don't put your physical address on your resume. Uh, you can have the city, the state, and the zip code, that's just fine, but you have no control over where this goes when it leaves you, and you just don't want everybody in the world to know your physical address. To, you don't want these people showing up on your front doorstep. So uh, your, your major ways of being contacted are phone number and email. Um, now, I'm going to tell you do not put your picture on your resume. Um, in the United States, we have laws that say, you know, we can't make uh, hiring decisions based on what you look like, so you can't show us what you look like, all right? Um, but uh, you can put your LinkedIn URL on your in your contact information, and you're going to have a picture in your LinkedIn probably. So uh, yes to the LinkedIn URL, no to a picture on the resume. Uh, the applicant tracking system or the person, either one will reject you for having that. Okay. Um, you can also in uh, your heading um, put a personal website if everything you have uploaded to that personal website is um, professional. OK, no, don't treat it like, uh, oh, this is my Facebook. This is my Instagram. This is my TikTok. It has to be professional. Uh, and you all know the difference between what you can put on TikTok and what you can do uh, in a professional website. OK, all right. I think I've covered everything there. So this is how to write a bullet. And uh, this is really quick information, uh, but it will be available to you uh, afterwards. So um, you want to always start your bullet with a strong action verb, okay? And you want to vary those action verbs that you use. Don't use develop to start every action verb. But what you're looking for is a way to show them what you did in your job that transfers to them. You want to show those accomplishments. And the um, uh, best way to do that is quantify if you can. Quantifying is dollar signs, numbers, percentages, percentage signs. Uh, if you can't quantify, you want to qualify. And qualify is generally going to be words like adjectives and adverbs. So a lot of adverbs end in ly, so they're easy to think about successfully, efficiently, effectively, okay? So you want that strong action verb and you want the action. So in the second example, it says collaborated with colleagues. 
So there's your strong action verb and your action, okay? But you need to give them more information. What was the result? So collaborated with colleagues to develop plans, but you haven't quantified or qualified. So with that, the next step, you want to think about how can I quantify, how can I qualify? And I'm gonna tell you, never, ever, ever put anything on your resume that isn't true because that'll come back uh, and make problems for you in the future. So don't say, you know, uh, um, like this bullet does, reduce costs by 25% if it isn't true, okay? But if it's true, say it. So this achievement statement with the action verb, the example, and the result, collaborated with four colleagues to develop plans that effectively used marketable resources and reduced costs by 25%. Um, 25%, that's a quantity. Uh, effectively is that qualifier, okay? So think in terms of what you can give them. Um, so also you're looking at the keywords uh, out of all of those job descriptions are they using qualifiers? Are they using quantifiers? Are these things that you need to include in your resume? So you're gonna look for those. Um, a lot of the qualifying words are like uh, uh, excellent or adverbs like excellently. Um, not every adverb in, ends in L-Y, but a lot of them do. All right. Okay, so here's your skills. So you have soft skills and you have hard skills. So um, essential skills are what we're calling those soft skills, communication, uh, problem solving, those kinds of things. Technical skills, uh, softwares that you know how to use, Word, PowerPoint, uh, if you know how to code, those, those technical skills, Java and all of that, and your languages. And we talked about your languages and being able to uh, qualify them. So here's a couple of different ways that you can um, present your skills. Uh, notice that in the first uh, situation, they're using it just like writing a bullet, um, but they've qualified their knowledge of Latin, basic knowledge of Latin. In the second one, it's more, uh, of those uh, technical skills, those hard skills, and you don't have to make two separate skill sections, put them all in the same skill section. Um, but I'm also gonna show you in this second version that you need an editor. You need multiple eyes on your document because notice that Dreamweaver is misspelled. And if you send that off to a hiring manager, no matter what country they're in, if you've got something that is misspelled, you're, you're not going to hit the top five or six that they want to actually interview. Okay, so keep, a, keep an editor. Uh, it can be a peer, but you can always utilize the Career Center for uh, document critiques. So uh, resume critiques, cover letter, uh, as you are moving up, if you're in graduate school, uh, you may need a CV uh, critique. And those are a lot of fun. I love those because they're longer. Okay. Uh, identify the most important skills to the prospective employer. Okay. Um, you may be the best cake icer and cake decorator in the entire world, but unless that is a skill that your prospective employer cares about, it may not be what you want to put on the uh, resume. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, and um, when you're talking about this, you can qualify your ability in anything. So you may be conversational in French, um, but uh, you can also have basic knowledge of Adobe Photoshop. All right. So you can qualify anything. If you're not qualifying, they may expect you to be, uh, you know, uh, expert in that. Uh, so qualifying your skills is a good idea. Okay. 
Now, these are the competencies um, for uh, career readiness that NACE, uh, it's the National Association of uh, Colleges and Employers. And so NACE came up with these areas that you can identify skills and abilities through them. So career and self-development, communication, critical thinking, equity and inclusion, leadership, professionalism, teamwork, and technology. Uh, this is a wonderful list. It's not an, an all-inclusive, comprehensive list, but it can give you a place to start thinking about, oh, yes, I know how to do that, and I can think of that, uh, because you're not necessarily always going to have it in the resume and cover letter, but in the interview, you may need to talk about that. Um, now, cover letters. Um, a cover letter goes with the resume if you're mailing it, emailing it, or uploading it. So um, this is a very basic, you know, down and dirty way to have a cover letter. Uh, you're going to have an introductory paragraph. You're going to have two or three sell yourself paragraphs. These are where you tell them what you can do for them. You don't want to say, I want to get experience so that I can jumpstart my career because they don't care really what you want. They're looking to say, what can you do for us? Okay, so uh, introduction and then the sell yourself paragraphs. In those paragraphs, you're going to tell them the things you want them to pay attention to. So first, you're going to say, hey, go look at my resume again. You're emphasizing something that you put in the resume. So you can say, as you can see from my resume, I have experience doing blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's really important. Uh, but then you can utilize the cover letter to provide information that it didn't fit in your resume. Okay, you're a world traveler, but that didn't fit in the resume. So in the cover letter, you can say, uh, in addition, I have traveled to every continent on the globe. So that sounds really cool, uh, but make sure it's true because my first question is going to be, well, what were you doing in Antarctica? Because there just aren't a lot of tourist uh, options there. So, you know, maybe you want to say, you know, six out of the seven continents uh, in the globe. And that way they just assume that you haven't been to Antarctica. Okay. And then you're going to have a, uh, concluding paragraph and in the concluding paragraph you ask for the interview you are asking them i'm available at your convenience for an in-person phone or video interview please contact me at and you're going to put your name uh, not your name you're going to put your uh, email and your phone number again in that paragraph because the hiring manager might spill their coffee and oh my goodness, you were the most, the best candidate. You matched everything they needed and they're not able to uh, because, um, you know, they spilled their coffee. But if you've got your contact information in two different places, then, oh, look, I, there's the phone number. I can still call Donna. And, and that helps you a lot. So, you know, also, I'm going to tell you, create a template version of your cover letter. Of course, you're going to change things to target that specific job or that specific company, but having a basic template that you've highlighted in hot pink, anything that needs to change for every uh, uh, job, well, when you go in and make that change, you remove the hot pink highlight, and so if if there's no highlight on it, you know it's ready to go. But if it's, there's still something in hot pink or green or whatever, you know you still have to make changes. So that's a really good uh, way for that to happen. All right. um, and you know we can help you also with that document uh, through the critique. Okay, I am going to. Um, uh, show you the university career center website in just a moment but this information is 
um, some of the resources that we have, <clears throat> pardon me, that you can utilize. We're going to talk about Parker Dewey. So Parker Dewey, <coughs> pardon me. Parker Dewey is a, a partner with us and they are a manager of internships. Okay, so um, companies list internships with them. You will go in, create an account, upload your resume, and then you'll be able to view uh, the things. There are There is an application part as well, and you want to fill that out as completely as possible. I know it's extra work, but this is really good. Parker Dewey has remote paid internships. So these are short term paid internships that you can do from home or from your dorm room. Um, and so uh, that um, that extra application that you fill out where you uh, give them some information about, you know, your hobbies, your interests, uh, you know, your skills and abilities answer those questions because that's going to get you uh, matched to certain companies and certain internships and that's going to be very helpful to you now if you are a u.s citizen uh, you can apply for global internships and apply with international companies in parker dewey because it doesn't matter these are all remote and so your location doesn't matter if however you are an international student if you utilize Parker Dewey to do these short term internships, you have to use your CPT or your OPT. And so before you make that decision, be sure that you are talking to your advisor over in the uh, international uh, student office so that you're not uh, making you're making a, a right decision at, at the right time. Okay, okay. career shift one of the best things we have another partner you get uh, an infinite number of searches you can put in your keywords and your geographic location that you'd like to have and it will go out and find all the jobs uh, and it'll look at, at all the job boards and all the employer websites so you don't have to have uh, an account with every job board uh, again, study abroad office is going to be very helpful to you, uh, but uh, okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint. I'm going to get into my uh, Career Center website and, uh, and pull that out so that we can start doing that. If you will give me just a moment. Okay, Tony, I made you a co-host in case you need that. And, okay, now I'm coming back, hopefully. And I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, now, can everyone see the University Career, Career Center website? Uh, no? Yes? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so from here, you can get to a lot of our really good um, uh, resources so uh, if you're looking for an on-campus job if you want to do an assessment if you want us to critique your documents higher red raiders is our jobs database and that's always a good place to start create an account upload your resume and uh, fix it so that employers can come and look at your resume so uh, that's helpful to you all right so what I want to show you is on students and alumni, you've got develop your job search skills. So here's a lot of resources for you. Uh, Optimal Resume is now called uh, First Hand, I think, um, but it has 
uh, hundreds of examples of different resumes. And, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about this is uh, you can, they're in Word documents, so you can look at one and go, oh, I like that and that one and that and that one, and smush them together and make your own version. Uh, but that is helpful. Uh, and the resume guide, also very helpful. Uh, the professional videos, um, you know, what to do, what not to do, that can be very helpful. Uh, and so there's a lot of good information on this page. It's there for you. Utilize it. Okay. Again, we're going up to students and alumni. And we're going over here to search for jobs. Okay. So uh, everybody can see the page that says search for jobs at the top. Okay. So I talked about higher red raters. That is our jobs database. Um, we've talked about career shift. Parker Dewey. So Parker Dewey requires that you make an account and I have never made an account. So I'm, we're gonna stop right here at Parker Dewey. Um, uh, then career shift, we're, I'm gonna walk you through career shift. So I am going to enter in because I do have, okay, career shift. Uh, I do have an account for that. And All right. So career shift does a lot of fantastic, wonderful things. Uh, you can search for jobs. You can uh, create your contacts list. You can follow companies. You can have your documents up here. It does a lot of wonderful things. Um, now, uh, one thing about this is that you have to utilize your Texas Tech email to make your uh, uh, account. And if you don't have a Texas Tech email, you have to uh, um, email the Career Center and ask for that permission. And you can get that permission. It isn't difficult, but um, you have to ask for it. So. Now we're going to go to jobs and we're going to do a job search. Now you have an infinite number of searches here, so you can change the keywords as often as you want. You can change the geographic location as often as you want. In order to do this, we have to do the advanced search. So we're going to turn that on and um, I'm going to put in um, public relations um, as my keywords okay uh, if someone has some in the chat that you want to suggest uh, we can do that then you're going to change the country because you know global internships are not united states for uh except in other countries so let's say that you um we chose switzerland earlier so I know that uh, we can do Switzerland. We're going to look, Switzerland is a pretty small country, so we're going to look at the entire country. Uh, if you had chosen uh, Germany, you might uh, ask for a specific um, province and a specific city, but we're going to look at the whole thing. Now, you're looking for internships, and you can on here say, I only want to see internships. Um, the thing about internships is it takes out all the full time jobs and all the part time jobs, and if you're not looking for those you might miss companies that you would really like to work for. And so find a company that you could follow and say if they list an internship career shift email me, let me know. Uh, but that's entirely up to you so we're going to look at that. Uh, the job source needs to be all websites. It will go out and look at all the job boards and all the employer websites. So you don't have to go to each individual job board. And, uh, you know, there will be job boards that may be specific to a certain area or a certain uh, type of position that you may not have ever heard of, but CareerShift will find it. You're going to sort by relevance. then. I'm going to tell you skip salary estimate 
uh, and experience level, you've already said internship, so they know that you're not, you know, uh, an expert in these areas. The very first time that you search in that geographic location with those keywords, you want to look at the last 30 days. But as you are looking at them often, uh, you're going to say, oh, well, I looked, I searched for public relations in Switzerland just last week. So now I only want to look at the last seven days or the last two weeks or the last, you know, three days. So you don't have to look at all of those jobs that you've already said no to. Okay. So we're going to look at the last 30 days and then we're going to click search. Now, we found nine jobs that have the word internship or intern in them, okay? Uh, we have found nine jobs that also say public relations, okay? Now, this is a United Nations job. Let's look at that. It's temporary, but all internships are temporary, okay? So when we go there, we're looking uh, at a couple of different things. If it's from a job board, it's probably going to tell you that it's a job board. Uh, Indeed likes to put their name on things. But this is from careers.un.org. So it's coming directly from the United Nations. Okay. And here is that job description that I'm telling you, you're going to need to read these and figure out what are the jobs that are, what are the words that are showing up in all of these. Okay, so uh, they're going to sell you on the UN and tell you how wonderful their department is. Then they're going to say, here's the responsibilities, and they have this whole list. Then here's the competencies they want you to have. And notice they have broken them down. They've got professionalism, communication, teamwork. Okay, so you know that those things are going to be very important to them. Uh, your education, read that because, um, you know, applicants must meet one of the following requirements, be enrolled in or have completed a graduate school program, which means master's level, okay? So if you're an undergrad, you may not be able to apply for this. Uh, be enrolled in or have completed the final academic year of a first university degree. So uh, if you're a senior about to graduate, you can apply for this. All right, so that's the things you really need to know. They want you to be fluent in English and French. Um, uh, it's, you know, you don't have to be fluent, but knowledge of French is desirable, okay? Uh, they're gonna tell you how they're gonna assess you. They're gonna talk about the special notice and what they need in, as part of the application. So this is a very detailed job description. It's not something uh, that all jobs are going to look like this. Okay. And then we're going to move back to career shift. Um, that's another United Nations. Um, well, let's do Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and it's a communications internship. Okay. So um, again, it's a government job. So they're telling you a lot of information that a regular employer might not give you, okay? Um, and this is the British government. So they're telling you right up front. Um, communications, press and media is the category that they're looking for. They have information and then they have your duties and responsibilities your essential qualification skills and experience. They are pulling it out there, making this very easy for you. Um, the skills and experience others that they would like, that's great. Um, they want you to be able uh, to communicate, collaborate, deliver, uh, in, and engage internationally. Uh, so I'm not sure why you would want an international uh, internship if you don't want to engage with international people, but you know, I don't know everything. Okay. All right, so this is what you do. And we go back to career shift. Okay, 
So I found that. Let me see what's an internship public relations in, um, let's go to uh, Norway. I have no idea what's there. I haven't looked at this, but we can search and it says no results found. So if you really, really wanted to work in Norway, you're gonna take off the job type that says internship and look at all of them because that way you can find companies that you say, oh, that's a big company, I would like to work for them. And then you can approach them, uh, you know, it's not gonna be an application. You're gonna approach them and say, you know, I'm really interested in your company. I'm really interested in uh, Norway. If an opportunity comes available for an internship, please keep me in mind. You're still sending that really targeted resume, that cover letter, and uh, you're sending it uh, to someone, uh, to a person. Okay, so let's let's go find, uh, let's do Germany. Okay, and research. Okay, we found 16 jobs, all right? But one of the things about this is, oh, I don't know anybody there. I don't have anything. So you can utilize uh, the find contacts. Okay. Um, you can search for this, uh, or and I, I did it earlier. Uh, so I, I'm thinking I know how to do this. Um, let's go back to the job search in job search let's go back to that so let's do public relations again germany okay we're going to search we're going to uh oh louis vuitton we're going to look at that and here's the job description okay lots of fun there stuff there all right um it has an apply button in the career shift i'm going to tell you don't apply from there if you can go to the uh, company website and apply from their company website you want to do your research you want to read about that company you don't want to spend all of the time applying for a job and then figure out oh i don't want to work for that company they don't have the same values or they don't have the same uh, uh, concerns that I have. So you want to do your research. Okay. And I'm going back. And it, um, let's do this again. See if it, you know. Okay. So when you're doing a search, you can search for contacts in a specific company. And Tony walked me through it earlier and I'm obviously not doing it correctly now. Um, but that way you can find those names. You can click on them if they're in LinkedIn and it will take you to their LinkedIn page and you can find out if they're still at that company, if they're still in that same position or they've gotten a promotion and uh, you may be able to connect with them through LinkedIn, okay? All right. Um, okay, so questions about any of this? Let's see. Oh, man, I have no idea what I'm doing now. Okay, I'm going to not do the chat. I've got other people doing that for me. All right, um, I'm going to stop this share. Questions? Uh, anybody have ideas or anything that they want specifically? I have a couple of questions. Um, okay, great. Uh, the Parker, what is it, Parker Warby? Parker Dewey. Dewey. That's <laughs> really great because 
students could potentially do it online, but also a lot of our students, they're not, you know, maybe they can be in Dallas or um, Houston over the summer. And there's a lot of international companies that mm -hmm. are based in those cities. Is, um, would they find these kind of internships the same way? Yes. Now, one of the things about Parker Dewey is, um, uh, once you have gotten hired to do one of these internships and they're short term, so it could be a week, a month, six weeks, um, but you're developing networking contacts with the person who's supervising you. And mm -hmm. so then you can say, oh, I'm going to be in Dallas or I'm going to be in Houston. Is there an opportunity for an in-person internship? And you can do that. And Tony may have other information as well. Yes, so with Parker Dewey, there are international companies there. Um, the cool thing about, about it, they're all paid. Um, you can apply for as many as you want. Some of them will only take about six hours. So if you have a quick weekend that you can, and you wanna make $20 an hour, you can you can take that on or if you want a, a more a long term and by long term i mean maybe 40 or 50 hours they have projects that they post but they post new projects almost every day so this has to be something that as a student you go in every few days and look at the newest um, postings so that you can get in there and you can apply quickly because you're not just going against texas tech students it's students from all over all universities and even new alumni. But once you get your foot in the door with a company and they see your work and they see your work ethic, there's been a lot of instances where they ask uh, if they take you on as a, a regular intern, maybe for 10 weeks, or they offer you a job upon graduation. So lots of great ways. You're guaranteed payment. You can add these to your resume. Parker Dewey actually sends you your check to your bank account or however it's set up. But you can list uh, this experience, um, for instance, if it's with um, Bank of America, you list Parker Dewey, but then you also can list Bank of America. So it's pulling in all that information for a potential uh, employer to see. Um, okay, and then the second question I have is certainly for our students who are studying critical languages, but all languages, um, many of them want to work for the State Department or they want to work at state service. Would they use the career shift to, to find those internships? Uh -huh. Yes, because you can use State Department as part of your keywords mm -hmm. and it'll show those. Um, uh, if you have a specific agency that you want, you can uh, do that. Um, you can also set up career shifts so that if that a state department or a specific agency that you're interested in lists an internship, career shift will notify you of that. So that's a way to, to utilize career shift for that. Um, I will say that a US government resume is going to be very different from what we've just talked about how to create your resume. So if you're thinking, uh, I want to work for the State Department, be sure that uh, you come and say, hey, I need help creating that government uh, uh, resume. And, you know, uh, jobs, uh, is it usajobs.com? Yes, usajobs.com. And then I just put in for State uh, Department of State uh, a link for them. But the uh, government jobs oftentimes will have a webinar on just how to fill out their applications because it's intense and it's uh, long and it's not your typical way of filling things out. So we will keep our eyes open and our ears open. And if something pops up for a webinar, we can send that on to you. Thank mm -hmm. you. That would be really helpful. Yes. Sure. And I don't know if you, you uh, if it's relevant or not, but we do have um, a FBI contact. So we have a specific person who recruits Texas Tech students uh, in the FBI. If anybody's interested in that, do you not also have a national security agency 
contact? Am I wrong? NSA? I thought you did. Just FBI. Um, I don't. Tony, do you know of anybody? I don't. But we Carol Trigg may know something more about that. Yes, Carol is. Carol knows everything. Okay. And we can ask Carol and let you know. <laughs> yeah, I will write that down so I know to ask. I'm going to drop um, a webinar that was recorded from uh, how to apply for federal jobs webinar. Um, it's, it's recorded, it's about 48 minutes long, but I dropped it in the chat in case somebody has those 45 minutes or 48 minutes that they would like to spend listening to that. And if I do get an updated version, I can send that one out. And just filling out one of those forms is actually a pretty good experience because they, it is a special. Yeah, it's us. There's nothing else like it. And the, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Yes. Yes, I agree. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It's just that very first time is like overwhelming. So. Any other questions, anything else? You, I'm in the Career Center, Tony's in the Career Center. Uh, you don't have to make appointments with us, but uh, if you do make an appointment and you say, hey, um, you know, uh, I attended that webinar, we'll know what you're talking about and we'll understand what you're here for. So. Did you get the message from um, from um, Minka for asking for email? Oh, for sure. Oh. Your center. Yeah, definitely do that. Okay. 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 Sorry, it's taking me a little bit. I want to thank you both for being here and Donna for setting it up and putting everything together. Um, I realize how important this is for students and I hope that, you know, we'll, we'll record this and put it up and then we have the, the, the repeat session tomorrow, but that we have our department CMLL has more contact with Career Center and keep these connections going. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, um, I love working with your students. So, uh, anytime and you know as as things change maybe we need to update this webinar again and do that so. okay well i greatly appreciate it so oh of course thank you